Hi, Sean. Others, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, you? Yeah, not bad, fella. I'm not bad at all. Good stuff. Uh, last time we spoke, we talked about your COVID journey and we focused on how you felt and that emotional impact uh, that it had on you. And what we said is what we'd like to look at next and really understand is what you did uh, during the unprecedented times. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the change curve, didn't we? Mm. Uh, and very quickly during that time, I recognised that it wasn't a framework I could use as such. What the change curve is, in reality, is just that emotional stages that people go through when they encounter change. Uh, and you know me, my little black and white brain loves a framework. So it wasn't a framework I could use as such. So I needed a framework to help me, help my people navigate the change curve, if that makes sense. That makes sense. You did make sense. <laughs> and I do know you do love a, a framework, so yeah, I get that. I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, you get it. So, um, so what was your priority then? If that was the problem, what was your priority? What did you want to achieve? Well, my overwhelming priority at that stage was to try and make people feel psychologically safe. You know, the world was a very unsafe place. We were kind of presented with a challenge which was weird to everybody. So, you know, there was some real external challenges there. So I wanted people to make uh, a real effort, or I wanted to make a real effort to make people feel psychologically safe. I thought the best way to do that was to get people to trust me as quickly as possible. I've, oh, I've heard a couple of say, sayings over the years which always kind of ring true for me in as much that would you follow somebody who you didn't trust? The answer is, mate, you know as well as I do, no, you wouldn't. Uh, would you follow anybody who you felt didn't have your best interests at heart? Again, the answer is, no, you wouldn't. So to get people to trust me was very much a priority with the hope that that would make them feel psychologically safe. Mm. Get it, understand that. The part, I think, that really springs to mind is that must have been a challenge because you'd only been there for a short period of time, three months, really. And I would say at best, your guys knew you at worst, didn't know you. Yeah, that was the challenge. Um, normally, that um, that unseen feeling that human beings have, trust, that develops over a long period of time. You're right, I'd only been with the organisation for three months, uh, so I needed that trust, that I needed those trust levels to be enhanced very, very quickly. Uh, so that's why kind of having a, a model to work towards, which was very important. That's when me and you first started talking about the ABCD trust level. And if you just hang on a second, I've got it um, to hand, so I shall get it up on the screen. So yeah, that ABCD trust model worked around and is based around those four areas. So being able, so illustrating your ability, being believable, being connected with your team and being seen to be dependable. That's how you enhance your trust levels. So yeah, Phil, that was the framework that I started working around to try and get to that place where my people's uh, trust levels were enhanced with me as quickly as possible. Mm. Interesting stuff. And I suppose, but in terms of measuring it, how did you know you were making progress? Yeah, as always, um, that measurement element was was key um, because was I making progress or not? You know, was what I was doing working or not? Yeah. So I, I needed that measurement. So we sent out a survey uh, just before Christmas last year, a uh, trust survey uh, to all the team, which was anonymous. And that survey was based around those four areas uh, to see if that progress had been made. Brave. A brave thing to do as a leader. Very, very, very brave. I, was, I wasn't sure what was going to come back. That's for sure. But uh, yeah. So what were the results? <laughs> well, the results were interesting, mate, as always, because it gave us a great steer in terms of what was working, but also. Uh, a very heavy steer in terms of areas where there was still lots of room for improvement. So the B, C and D area, believable, connected and dependable, 
I'd made some significant progress in those areas. Right. The right. one area where I was having an issue was in that able space, that uh, A, A for able space. That was the bit where the progress was was patchy. Right. Uh, and, and interesting because I then started to analyse, I suppose, what were the reasons behind that? I suppose the only thing I could arrive at was the fact that, if you like, things were different. So that normal sales management, sales director role, observing a salesperson in a call with the buyer, um, seeing what that person did well, what that person didn't perhaps do as well, giving them feedback and coaching on the back of uh, that observation. Because the world was different and that traditional sales environment wasn't in place, that was just a lot more difficult. So I suppose the only thing I could arrive at was that was the, the bit that was missing. So as a result, that area was still weak. So I've still got some, you know, some ground to make up on that area. But the other three areas were relatively strong. So I illustrated that I'd made some progress, which then Phil allowed me to go into other areas. I felt that the trust levels were okay. People were starting to believe me. So then I could go into, uh, you know, work in some of my other core value areas. One of which is one of which is teamwork. So we started to do some work around around teamwork to enhance what we were doing within the organisation. Great, so, interesting. So what would you like to hear from people who who watch this? Um, well, yeah. If there's any engagement on in the back of this conversation, I suppose Phil, two areas. So I had struggled to make progress in that able area. So how did other leaders illustrate their abilities during a time where things were really different? And we've also touched around, touched on one of my core values, which is teamwork. So um, what are other leaders' core values? What do other people believe in? What are the things that they instill within their organisation as core values? So it'd be interesting to, to get some engagement around those two areas, if possible. Yeah. And so you talked around, you know, one of your core values, teamwork. And I think for our next conversation, it'd be interesting to really dig into your other values and what they are and what you start to do with those. And also that journey towards your purpose, how you started to work towards that purpose and then started to implement around that. Yeah, 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 absolutely, mate. That, that's no problem at all. And that's the real, if you like, crux of where we've got to over the last year or so. So, yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be, it'd be interesting and good to start to, to really connect to, to that element of, a, of, of what we did. Great. Okay. Look forward to it. Yeah, nice to speak to you, mate. Bye. Bye. Cheers, Bye.